think people were worried when you began. <laughs> oh, oh God! He's the scariest looking guy in the room. We gotta join his religion. Come on, we all need a little fucking. <laughs> little Lord Buckley, come on. Oh boy. <laughs> that was great. <clears throat> so, I call my piece Spinster Redefined. Mm. Here we go. I just blinged these out this morning. <laughs> just for this piece. Thank you very much. Ooh, I can get a little woozy. Who needs drugs? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I gotta stop asking rhetorical I can't stop asking rhetorical questions. Alright. Spencer. Used to be defined as a childless older woman beyond the age of marriage. Times have changed. The old maid has been put to rest after a long run of shaming and guilting women into a desperate marriage to avoid being her. My definition for spinster, an educated, child-free woman of any age who supports herself financially and has not prioritized getting married. With new definitions come new roles. When asked why she's never married, the confirmed bachelorette doesn't bow her head in shame and mumble about, well, I've never met the right one. Instead, she proudly rounds her shoulders and says, just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Our girl's best friends are no longer diamonds. She only wanted those things because she had very little viable financial means to support herself besides marriage, inheritance, and jewelry. Uh, nowadays, a girl's best friend is generating her own income. Since money can buy happiness when she has her priorities straight. The contemporary spinster knows that her hair is her crown and glory. And she prefers her crown to turn silver celebrating all her collective years of glory. If she suffers a disfiguring accident, then she'd have reconstructive surgery, but aging is no accident. It's a blessing. The practical spinster wants single men to know, sight on scene, that she, as an older woman, isn't going to tolerate the same bullshit as she did in her 20s. <laughs> Gotta grow up sometime. <laughs> the modern spinster's fashion is anything she wears. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, uh, after surviving decades of misogynistic fads, she knows confidence and happiness are true timeless styles, which goes with any accessory. To set the record straight, older women don't chase after younger men. No, we just can't run fast enough to get away from them when they chase after us. And here's a piece of silver spinster advice. If your buff boyfriend goes to carnival wearing hardly anything except a severed stuffed animal horse head on his dick. You cannot play the jealous uh, uh, girlfriend when other women want to take a picture with him. <laughs> I know, that was very specific. I wonder if that happened in real life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lastly, there's always a silver lining if you're not too angry to see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> And one of my favorite silver linings is our next true letter, who changed his hat again. Yeah. I like the orange one, but oh, okay, yeah. you're partially yellow. I know. <laughs> Please welcome Tom the World Poet and anyone who cares to be a musician as he performs. So I know you have a ukulele. Too. That, that was for you. <laughs> and anyone else? Just prior to coming here, I was watching 48 minutes of a new show called Black Mirror, and the premise of it is that you can replay any experience by having an implant. You've seen it? 
I just love that show. I'm addicted to it as much as Wired magazine. I love the future, although the future is partly past. But uh, the bottom line is that uh, I then watched Eight and a Half Minutes of Russell Brand because I find him to be the most annoying and obnoxious and <laughs> person the world has ever seen. So being a masochist at heart, I watched it twice. <laughs> His point is that we're all one and the consciousness is out beyond our five senses and that the unwritten rule is that we are not really experiencing what our life we think it is because we are limiting it to the nets of our receptors. But there is a world outside our receptors. You're nodding, you've seen it, you know, understand what he says. Well, waste of time. So, <laughs> my Ten Commandments. You need to be online 24-7. To have your smartphone updated at all times, check your apps. Always look for the free Wi Fi whenever you're at a public venue. Stay connected by any social media whatsoever. Update your blog, forget that website. Augmented and virtual reality, that's what we want, yes, please, more of, not just normal. Most information accessible online. The rest of it is accessible via WikiLeaks eventually. <laughs> Your Facebook friends are not friends. They never will be. They never were. You'll never meet them. Beware spyware, malware, viruses and catfish sites. Update your apps at all times. Seek new cliches. You have this happened to me. I was uh, at a reading, and I and I put down what I had, and it was taken. It was taken. My phone. My phone. I tried to update the phone, follow my own cliches, but they took my phone. So I had to live there without one, and that's why it's restored my art of conversation to your silence. You see, because when I was on the phone, I was engaged with the phone. The phone was my relationship. I spent more time online than actually being amongst people. I was online all the time. If I wasn't on Facebook, I was sending out emails of poetry to people who didn't really want them. <laughs> you have the app, but your phone they stole. Here is where the rubber hits the road. Where the app meets the actual map, and you must seek out where it's at. Once upon an app it was, where is Waldo? Now the young gather seeking icon and logos, and the thieves steal their smartphones. Does anyone remember Dungeons and Dragons? Still play. A social circle of <laughs> people's homes. Now our world is being invaded by players who feel a need to find imaginary characters. In time, I guess we will all adjust, but right now, thieves will steal from the innocent first. In your future, which is now, you will be digital. You will be digitalized. In, uh, in all our future, you will have free will and will obey embedded logarithms. In future time, time will be purchased as will life extension processes. In your future, you will no longer need rockets, it will be a tanker. Soul travel, you can travel in your mind. Technology will allow to travel and thought, mind travel, and your future find hard to determine fact from fiction. Newspapers will just be digital codes. They mostly are now. In fact, each of us will be issued a number. Check your license. Have you seen the fingerprints on the back? The little numbers? You already have them. Which you're not to lose, that your identity gets stolen. Tomorrow is your future. Today you may need to report to the recall factory. Your number might be up. If any one of you remembers Al Gore, remember Al Gore rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> Maths and science. Nerds know there are ways to change results, so all elections become a tool rather than a mirror. And a tool is always in the hands of those who profit most via use. Bernie Sanders is still acting, looking for real results. Even when Hillary moves on to Trump, Trump. Our little votes are all we have to call ourselves a democracy. 
oligarchy, dictatorship by technology. Every election we see hanging chads, lost ballot boxes, vote rigging, discouragement of minority voters, poll taxes not so very long ago in Texas. Unwritten rule is those who have wish to keep, those who have not will not get. And it happened that in our lifetime there was the atomic bomb. In our lifetime, the hydrogen bomb. In our lifetime, the neutron bomb. So in the alphabet of our communal existence, we have gone from A to H to N. World War IV may have already happened. We are living post Armageddon. In our consciousness, which is all we have to re-script this paradise post-apocalypse, don't wait for a holocaust. What you have, of course, is your creative attention. In effect, of peace demonstrations, just angry, angry people. Whatever there is, you make your future from your own bliss. The only unwritten rule is still unwritten. <laughs>